Okay, now. The nephew of Mandela, and she said to me, "This guy is great, <laughs> but the guy keep like talking. a man." Keep, keep talking. <laughs> I like the flowers, I like the flowers. It took me 50 years to meet him, so it's not a day. And I thank also for this. My, my question is, today you are a new man. Now you know the mistakes you made. But how much did tennis give you as a man, not as man years, as a man, how much did tennis give you? Well, the reason uh, uh, I became a tennis player, um, you know, difficult to explain. I, I was fortunate to be talented with different type of sports, but ultimately I was given an opportunity by my parents to, you know, choose tennis. Tennis is a very expensive sport. Uh, when I picked up the racket in the 70s as a little boy, um, become a tennis professional uh, wasn't heard about, certainly not in Germany. And when I did start uh, in 1984 as a professional, um, you know, most people ask me, well, can you make a living with it? I mean, is there a job called tennis player? You know, again, we have to think about, we're talking 80s. Um, so uh, because of tennis, uh, we're sitting here. Because of tennis, uh, uh, this, this film is made. Uh, and so, so, you know, everything, everything I am, I'm, I'm because of, of choosing to be a tennis player. Next question, please. Uh, hi to all, my name is Makara Petian, I'm founder and publisher of the culture magazine Spirit, the Smile and the Storm. Since my 16th living year, so I started also young like Boris. <laughs> and question to Boris, even I talk, uh, I'm German, I talk uh, now in English, that the other can also understand. Um, Boris, now you're also a movie star. Uh, are you a cineastic person? And maybe you can name three of your all-time favorite uh, films of your life and give a short reason, please. I'm really curious for it. Thank you. Well, I, I'm a big, um, big film um, you know, fan. It's just, this is, you know, my, my perfect night is with a good movie on the television. This is what I consider, you know, with my loved one next to me and we're watching a great film. Now there are thousands of great movies, uh, uh, so it's difficult to pick a couple. Um, uh, I, I like I like some of the great actors uh, uh, that, that everybody loves, whether that's a Sean Penn or some of you, you know, older. I, I always loved a, a you know um, Jack Nicholson, uh, uh, you know those, those those older ones that I loved. I love the James Dean. I love the Marlon Brando. You know, they're all a bit rebel for some reason. I like them. You know, it, I think it, it, it plays a plays a story. Um, and uh, I, but I mostly love about movies when it says it's based on a true story, because then I, I put my attention to it uh, much more careful. And, and this is what what this this film is about. It's it's not based on a true story. It is a true story. And that's uh, uh, you 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 know you, you watch it later on and. And you think, this, this must be a movie. Well, my, my life seems like a movie sometimes. I just happen to be, um, it just happened to be real. And, and uh, so I'm, I'm honored to be part of the Berlinale. You know, I was always coming here as a fan. Uh, I was always wondered, one of these days, I'm, I'm <coughs> hopefully going to be a part of a, of a movie. And uh, thanks to, to John and Alex, uh, I was able to do that. So I'm, I'm very honored to be here. Speaking of, speaking of movies, uh, we have one of the most productive filmmakers. <laughs> He's sitting next to me, Alex. Uh, this film also to me seems uh, another creation in sub the documentaries. Is it for you also some kind of Western, as yeah. I saw it? <laughs> yes. Um, in fact, I think it was somebody at the festival who, who dubbed it a docu-Western, and I like that remark. I mean, one of the things that we discovered as we were putting together some of the tennis sequences was that it was very much, I, we wanted to take it out of the genteel world of the tennis club and put it in kind of the dusty world of the gunslinger. And so we used uh, some of the music of uh, Ennio Morricone uh, from some of the uh, Sergio Leone spaghetti westerns to really give a sense of, of, of that mano a mano vibe. Uh, and, and that was fun. That was a lot of fun. 
also watching the film is a lot of fun. <laughs> Hello. Very right. Hello, Ronnie Thora, German Press Agency, uh, Radio Department. Eine Frage zu, an Boris Becker mit der Bitte, vielleicht eine Frage in Deutsch zu beantworten für die deutschen Radiosender. Äh, wie geht es Ihnen inzwischen nach der Gefängnisstrafe ja auch? Sie hatten in Interviews ja gesagt, so ein neues Leben fängt an, Sie seien ein besserer Mensch geworden, Sie wollten auch viel ändern, ich glaube auch an sich mit anderen Kreisen umgeben etc. Vielleicht können Sie ein bisschen erzählen, wie es seitdem läuft sozusagen. Ich würde den Rahmen jetzt ungern sprengen, weil da müsste ich Ihnen stundenlang erzählen, wie es mir geht. Ich will es auch nicht langweilen, aber es fühlt sich gut, wieder in Freiheit zu sein. Ich sage immer gerne in Frieden und Freiheit. Wir sollten uns alle bemühen, bessere Menschen zu sein. Gelingt es das jeden Tag? Ich glaube nicht, aber die, die Hoffnung stirbt zuletzt, sagt man. Ich bin froh, dass ich hier ja, auf der Berlinale bin. Und bin sehr stolz äh, auf die Arbeit. Äh, das waren fünf anstrengende, lange Jahre, wo unglaublich viel passiert ist, generell in der Welt, aber ganz speziell in, in meinem Leben. Und äh, dass eben das Ende des Films eben so gekommen ist, hätte auch niemand geglaubt. Ich meine, wir haben unser letztes äh, Gespräch gehabt, äh, zwei Tage an einem Mittwoch, also zwei Tage vor der Urteilsverkündung. Und an diesem besagten Mittwoch wusste ich wirklich nicht, wie der Rest meines Lebens aussieht. Das muss ich mir vorstellen. Also das ist also was, was äh, Schwieriges, äh, habe ich in meinem Leben noch nie ähm, äh, erfahren dürfen. Äh, ich bin froh, dass ich nach acht Monaten und sechs Tagen heil aus dem Gefängnis äh, kommen konnte. Und äh, sehe das Leben natürlich heute mit ganz anderen Augen. Äh, bin, bin dankbar, dass ich im Kreis meiner Familie und ja, einigen wenigen guten Freunden äh, mein neues Leben aufbauen darf. Äh, und ich hoff, hoffe eben auch, dass der Film eine Seite von mir zeigt, die man so noch nicht kennt. Äh, und gerade in Deutschland äh, wird das oft nicht zugelassen, dass auch der jüngste Wimbledon-Sieger aller Zeiten mittlerweile erwachsener geworden ist, 55 Jahre alt. Und, und das äh, erlaubt hoffentlich dieser Film einfach eine neue, neue Sichtweite auf den Menschen Boris Becker. Uh, good morning, Mr. Becker, uh, Svanke Stein, World of Television. Uh, in the film we learned a lot about mental power and you just mentioned the mindset you needed to win Wimbledon. Uh, how has this mindset or mental power helped you to pass through these difficult times and has uh, this time, especially the time in jail, brought you to the brink of what you could bear? Um, that's a very good question, and I try to be as honest as I can. Um, you know, everything we do, everybody in the room, everything we, we decide really starts with, with your mindset, your attitude. When we get up in the morning, we all have a plan of how today would hopefully look like. In most cases, it doesn't go after plan. Usually something happens. And uh, in a way, my life as a tennis player has prepared me for my time in jail. Because you know the only thing that, that saves you on a tennis court in a Wimbledon final is your mind, uh, because you're afraid. Uh, uh, you you um, respect your opponent. You don't know the umpire. You don't know how you know how the match is going to be, and 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 your your life in jail is very very similar to that. You never know what's going to be around the corner tomorrow. So so um, uh, uh, it, it helped me in a way to prepare. Uh, for my life after tennis, because you know I've, I've been 17 years a tennis professional, but I I stopped when I was 32 years old. Now I'm, you know, 22, 23 year uh, 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 a citizen of the world, and and my my tennis life, you know, the wins and the losses have prepared me f for my my life after. And and yes, it's been it's been ups, it has some downs, but you know overall I'm I'm still. I'm still sitting here, and I'm, 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 I'm okay. Yeah. Uh, good morning. Um, Andrea Giordano, Icon Italy. Two questions for Boris Becker. So uh, the first is regarding uh, your relationship with Novak Djokovic uh, before, like a coach for three years uh, and after. So how much was it important to approach and to collaborate with Nole uh, in, in that period? And how much is important uh, Nole today for you? And the second question is regarding the tennis today, so in terms of the young talent, so I think Tsitsipas, Yannick Sinner, or Halkaraz, or, or, or Sverv. So can you, can you say something regarding this uh, new talent that uh, uh, are in this moment in a tennis tournament? So yeah. thank you so much. I mean, I'd love talking about tennis, but I think that's you know, part of, of today. But I'll give you a couple of answers. So thank you. let me just explain to you that Novak Djokovic uh, 
became a family member. You know, we had a we had a professional relationship uh, for many years, uh, and we we you know parted ways in 2016. But we always stayed close, and especially uh, uh, my time inside, he he supported uh, uh, me. He supported my my family. You know, uh, Wimbledon final that he's beaten Curious, I've seen inside, and I you know I started crying when he started winning. Um, so so uh, Novak Djokovic is also part of the the film, and 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 I'm I'm, I'm very proud that probably the greatest player of all time uh, is part of of uh, a story. Of, of Boris Becker. So that just shows you the relationship that I have with Novak and, and his family. And uh, about today's players, well, they still have to be Novak. You know, uh, you can call Alcaraz and Senna and Tsitsipas, and I all like them and they're great. But I think Novak is still the king. And, and, and the, the great challenge we have is to see the, the young up and comings uh, trying to beat the king, and I want to include, you know, obviously uh, uh, Ra Ra Rafa Nadal as well. You know, he's, he's, you know, tennis has two kings at the moment, which is great. Um, so this is why tennis at the moment is again very exciting. I want to pick up. I want to pick up this uh, thing about who is in this film because there's many people in this film, also very many, many prominent ones, uh, former tennis players, uh, enemies of Boris and friends, of course. I don't know, from Björn Borg, John McEnroe, Mats Wielander, to very cynical and uh, informative yet uh, Jan Tiriak. Uh, maybe a question to the producer's part. Is it hard to bring in these um, uh, the many uh, famous people in, in this project? Was it difficult to convince some? And, and then the next one to Alex. How do you manage to... Because in a, in a way, your film is also giving your filmic way of justice up you are objectifying, but at the same time you bring out a lot of truth and details in a very ambiguous <laughs> case. So about the, about the part participants and then how to work It's with a them. very simple and quick and easy answer. It's not difficult to get any of those people when Mr. Boris Becker is asking them if they'll be in his film because they all love him and they all respect him and they didn't hesitate for one second to agree to be in the film. Saying enemy was, of course, just meant for the minutes right. on court. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I mean, you, you, I have to add something to it. I mean, you, you said this lightly. I mean, we have the likes of Djokovic, Bjorn Borg, John McEnroe, Michael Stick, Jon Teriak, Mats Vilanda. I mean, I don't know any, any other sports film, no tennis sports film, that has so many former superstars exactly. of that sport, you know, spending their time uh, uh, because uh, you know, they 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 you know they wanted to speak about me, and and you know y yes you know they're all busy and uh, yes uh, it was a phone call, but you have to usually go through agents and sponsorship and they don't have time they're busy and everything so this was not easy to get them all, uh, and and, and so some of these interviews was done when I was inside so I wasn't even involved actually, so I I don't know how you finished with all these guys uh, but it's. It's unbelievable, honestly. If you if you like the sport, you want to listen to, I don't know how many former number ones we have in this. You know, McEnroe, Borg, Djokovic, Vilanda, you know, Michael Stich was number two. I mean, who who has that? Honestly, I, I want to brag a little bit now. I want to I want to show off a little because it's I'm really proud of that. Do you want to say something, Alex, about the way you balance? the things they say and... Well, yeah, so all I would say is that, I mean, you know, Boris, with great generosity, uh, you know, opened up and, 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 and talked to me at, at, at enormous length. Uh, but particularly after the second interview, you know, part of my job was to kind of make sense of, uh, of, of this moment of Boris going to prison and how that connected to the 17-year-old who won Wimbledon. And so occasionally... You know, I will, uh, you know, in addition to Boris telling his story, occasionally I will interject, ask questions, wonder about things in ways that um, is personal to me, but also to some extent I hope stands for kind of the point of view of the audience, a kind of questioning uh, and, um, and ultimately search for, for larger meaning. 
Äh, guten Morgen, ich bin Kira Schlender vom Sat1 Frühstücksfernsehen. Ich habe zwei Fragen. Zum einen, wie fühlen Sie sich damit, dass es jetzt noch eine zweite Dokumentation geben soll, in der Sie eben nicht selber sprechen, sondern unter anderem Ihre Gläubiger? Und was entgegnen Sie Kritikern, die sagen, dass Sie jetzt schon wieder äh, ja, zum Teil Ihr Luxusleben führen, was Sie ja eigentlich nach dem Gefängnis ablegen wollten? Das ist eine ungewöhnliche Frage in so einem Rahmen, aber Sie müssen ja einen Job machen, ich verstehe das. <lacht> Danke. Ähm, es gab in der Vergangenheit auch schon einige Versuche, einen Film über mich zu machen. Es wird wahrscheinlich auch in der Zukunft Versuche geben, einen Film über mich zu machen. Ich glaube, diese zwei Sprech Männer sprechen für sich. Äh, ein Oscar-Gewinner und ein, ein hervorragender Produzent. Also das hat schon in sich dann, ich meine, die Gästeliste, wir reden hier von absoluten Superstars des Tennissportes, äh, die teilgenommen haben, das spricht auch für sich. Und ich habe Kritiker seit 37 Jahren. Das wird sich wahrscheinlich auch in den nächsten 37, wenn ich so lange lebe, nicht ändern. Manche mögen meine blauen Augen nicht, manche meine lange Nase, also manche mögen meinen mein Frauengeschmack nicht, manche mögen jenes, also das wird es immer geben. Ich habe es noch nie allen recht machen können, vielleicht wollte ich es auch noch nie. Danke fürs Antworten. Please bear in mind, we only have a couple of minutes left and three more questions. Uh, this is <coughs> Dietz Meitzen from the daily newspaper Večer in Slovenia, a question for Boris Becker. In the film it is said that uh, you were playing your best tennis in periods when you most enjoyed playing the game. So I'd just like to know, uh, do you still play a lot of tennis in your free time? Do you enjoy playing the game? And do you still have that big serve that was your signature move? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could tell you yes, but uh, you know, tennis, the way I played it was very physical. And that meant I had a lot of injuries after my career. I'm not going to bore you explaining how many pieces of my body have been replaced. So I cannot jump the way I am. I don't have the same power anymore. Do I still love tennis very much? Uh, sometimes I help uh, the German national team in the Davis Cup, and they want to hit some balls with me. So, you know, some of the players. And I always tell them, don't play against me, play with me, so I can hit the ball back. So if you want to make me run, The rally is over quickly. If you hit in the middle of the court, I can hit the ball back. Yes. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Marcus. I'm from One Press TV in Sweden. Um, yeah, it was great to see the movie. Um, I haven't, I guess I was too young, so I haven't seen it before I played. So it was great to see the highlights from your career. Um, but also I think like, um, like one of the topics could be or was that um, you got trouble, you know, with the tax and the jail and that thing. And you mentioned it shortly in the movie. And I didn't really quite understand so much out of it. So is there something you could explain more about that? What does that even mean? <laughs> Maybe that this even takes mean? another hour. Yeah, this, <laughs> about, about what in particular? Uh, yeah, I mean, the <laughs> part when um, yeah, you got a trouble with the yeah, tax yeah. and uh, the jail thing. You mean I didn't. most recently? <laughs> Most recently, I think we. I think we will. You, you will have an individual interview later. I okay, feel okay, it okay, will okay. take yeah. okay. with Alex okay, and with Boris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another question, <laughs> please. So, sure. uh, these things with the sleeping tablets um, you mentioned in the movie. Um, was that something you mean? Was that affected your career in some way, or what was the purpose? Uh, yeah, with that. Look, I I'm, um, was trying to be as honest as I can when when Alex asked me the questions and and. You know, life as a, as a you know, tennis winning machine, it's a lot harder than it looks. We travel every week to another city, another you know, country, another continent, and then we have to function. And uh, every player has a different way of dealing with these expectations, these pressures, and always trying to win. Because uh, uh, if I don't win, especially the Germans, crucify me. So, so my, my responsibility was always trying to win as much as I can. Can you sleep all the time? No. You know, are there ways uh, uh, to fall asleep? You know, the wrong and the right way. Yes. And, and, and you know, my you know, in hindsight, my, my my wrong decision at the time was was you know taking sleeping pills. Yes. And when Alex asked me, and I'm I'm, I'm not going to lie to him. So, is that something common among athletes? Without spelling a secret, I think so. Um, Some do even worse than that. Uh, uh, some sleep like, like a baby. You know, I, I wasn't part of that. So uh, uh, this, this film is, is um, very authentic. 
and very real, and, and I I'm, I'm never claimed to be always the perfect winning machine, and I had some weaknesses, and I had some, some dark moments as well, and I think the, the film shows that. Please. Um, Gabriel Medra from the ADZ uh, Romanian. Meine, oh, oh. Rumänisch, oh, genau. Meine Frage gilt auch dem äh, rumänischen Protagonisten in diesem Film. Ähm, Jon Siriak hat ja eine große Rolle in Ihrem Leben gespielt. Ähm, welches Verhältnis äh, pflegen Sie heute zu ihm und haben Sie in der Retrospektive den Eindruck, dass er Sie vielleicht ein wenig besser hätte beraten können, <lacht> beispielsweise in finanzieller Hinsicht? <lacht> Kurze Antwort ja, ähm, äh, längere Antwort, äh, Jon Tjerek ist, ist für mich ja ein Vaterersatz äh, bis heute. Ich habe meinen Vater 1999 verloren und er, obwohl wir beruflich nicht mehr zusammengearbeitet haben, habe ich immer das Gefühl gehabt, dass ich äh, ihn als Vater anrufen konnte ähm, und er hat mir meistens immer das Richtige gesagt. Hat dann der vermeintliche Sohn immer das gemacht, was der Vater wollte? Nein. Ich habe Söhne und die machen auch nicht immer gerne das, was ich ihnen sage. Die kommen erst später drauf, dass vielleicht der, der alte Kerl doch recht hat. Und so, so war das auch zwischen John und mir. Aber dass er sich so lange zur Verfügung gestellt hat und dass er auch wirklich in seiner unarmischen Art mich zu Recht auch kritisiert hat, das steht ihm zu. Aber trotzdem weiß ich, wenn es hart auf hart kommt, ich kann John anrufen und er wird das Telefon ab abnehmen. Thank you, everybody. I will wrap it up now, saying that it's now your responsibility to make the readers and to make the viewers come to see the film and take the sleeping pills only after they saw the film. <laughs> they will have to take them that much, I can promise. We will have the premiere of the film today uh, in the Verti Music Hall at 3 p.m. I wish you good luck for that. It will be tremendous. I was there in this hall. It's huge. It's gigantic. It's maybe somehow similar, a little bit, a very little tiny bit, to a center court of Wimbledon. <laughs> thank you for this transition to the film court. And thank you, Alex Gibney. Thank you, Boris Becker. And thank you, John, for thank being you, here. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>